Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Doom and welcome to the last tutorial video for Red Alert 3. In the playlist you will find the entire campaign that I did with uh, Mr. Shadowy beyond this point. And I hope that thus far you have enjoyed the humor that the developers placed within the tutorial. I certainly did. And that's why I thought it was worthy to actually record them. Plus, you, you hardly ever see these things. Anyway, let us delve right into the last tutorial, your co-commander. Which only applies to the AI co-commander. Finally, the last lesson. Feels good to be almost finished, eh, Commander? Yep. Let's get started. In this lesson, you'll learn how to work with your co-commander to help achieve victory on the battlefield. You'll be working with a co-commander throughout the campaigns in Red Alert 3. Really nice. You can fight alongside a friend, <laughs> or if you don't have any friends, the game will provide one for you. No matter which campaign you're playing, your co-commander's forces will always be green. In general, you can expect your co-commander to do Hi. a halfway decent job of fending for him or Wait, herself or helping you out. But what? just in case, we've set up a handy dandy <laughs> interface for you to issue oh, specific no. <laughs> directives to your partner. In the upper left hand of your screen is the co-commander monitor. Unfortunately, this won't let you control your real friends, but it's useful when fighting alongside one of the game's co-commanders. Now, let's go over all the functions. First and foremost, there's a handsome image of your co-commander to remind you who you're fighting alongside. For this Why tutorial, you'll be fighting alongside the fresh-faced Soviet Commander Oleg. Commander, Comrade Oleg here. I trust you're enjoying the banality of this training lesson. Hurry up and learn what you need to, so we can get to the real thing. <laughs> right next to his oh. portrait are the various directives you can issue. Basically, you can boss him around. The first is take position which causes your co-commander to immediately send his available forces to a target location. To issue this directive, select the Take Position button. Then move your cursor over the battlefield and left-click again in the target area. Go ahead, please. New objective received. Albert is on the move. Right there. So yeah, this is what I mean, how funny it is. You saw that the hammer tank was just like looking at ar around himself like are you gonna fire are you gonna fire are you gonna fire i'm slowly backing out and coming back as an apocalypse tank and then you saw the tsunami tank just like uh oh. no. notice how oleg promptly responded by sending his forces to the position you requested now the next directive is strike target this directive makes your co-commander immediately send available forces to destroy that target and anything nearby much like last time to issue a strike target directive, you must first select the button, then move your cursor over an enemy and left click on it. Oh, issue a strike you. target directive on that enemy boot camp. New oh. objective received. I did it on the power plants, so hopefully they'll just destroy the rest as well. Oopsie. That's a little too fast. Well, that was nothing. Nope, you're He's not going doing down. This. So I'll have to manually do that at this point. That's stupid. Let's see if he is going to automatically destroy that. And if not, then he's stupid. Which he usually is. He's gone. Anything else? Yes. I'll take care of him for you. Maybe I should have... Oh, I could have moved him over right here and then started attacking. <laughs> that was an easy kill. Objective there. complete. Done. That is how we do it in Russia. Notice how Oleg immediately responded with his forces. Another option is to use the plan attack directive. This directive makes your co-commander build a good sized force to eliminate any enemy units in the target area, as well as any enemies encountered along the way. As with the others, to issue a plan attack directive, just select the button, then select a target enemy or location on the battlefield. Go ahead and use plan attack on the other side of that valley. This should be fun. <laughs> Building a hammer tank, a couple of uh, flag troopers. Building another hammer tank. Mine pyramid. 
Wait, why are the rest of these forces not moving? <laughs> it's not gonna be enough, just one hammer tank and one flak trooper, although it's, a, it's heroic. It's not gonna be enough, I think. Our ally is under attack. Screw you, ally, I don't give a shit. Finally, the rest of the forces join in. Oh, nice. He actually uses his uh, special ability as well, although it did get destroyed. See that? Your co commander's always got your back, Commander. <laughs> Lastly, let's go over the Keep Command Directive. This one makes your co commander fend for him or herself and he or she will always do so by default. Unlike the other directives, this one does not require you to select a target and may be used to cancel the other directives. To issue this directive, simply select the Keep Command button. Now then, we have one final type of directive to review. Any base detected. Okay. During the course of some missions, you will come across what we call Co-Commander Strikes. These are situational tactics your co-commander will use when given the signal. Notice how one has just appeared on the battlefield. Co-commander strikes may appear anywhere, anytime during a mission, and it's yours to decide how best to use them. Let us examine that co-commander strike more closely. To give your co-commander the signal to execute the strike, select it. This brings up a window explaining the strike. To confirm the tactic, select the execute button. Go ahead and give your co-commander the signal now. New objective received. <laughs> and of course, during my playthrough of Red Alert 3, the campaign, you won't be seeing this, slash you haven't seen this at all, because I'm doing it with a human player, and the human, if you have a human player as your co-commander, that doesn't work. It's only for the AI co-commander. So he's starting to send out his forces. Oh, including a couple of. Uh, no, no, it's just got. Is he going to use to attack that? Yeah, he is. Awesomeness. There you go. Twin blades are fun. Unfortunately, I can't zoom out any further. No oh well. You now have the know-how to work with your co-commander. As you can see, detected. your co-commander can help you do some of the heavy lifting. Now get out there and knock some heads together. Go on, what are you waiting for? A fancy ending with a sappy montage? As for you, boys, the truce is off! Finally, oh, you okay. jerks! Shut up! <laughs> and now you get the Soviet victory. <laughs> That's why I lost the... I, I really enjoy the uh, tutorial. It's just a bit of humor added into the tutorial while still being serious enough that you understand how it works. Of course, this last uh, this last tutorial focused fully on uh, if you play the campaign with uh, without a human co-commander. Something I'm not doing, I haven't done. So it doesn't apply to my playthrough, but it might apply, uh, might apply to your playthrough. Anyway folks, this has been the tutorial of Red Alert 3. In the next video, on the playlist at least, we will be starting the Soviet co-op campaign, me and Shadowy. And we'll be doing uh, one video per mission. And we'll do all three of the campaigns on medium difficulty. Because for me it is a blind playthrough, and Shadowy is kind of rusty with it as well. So anyway folks, my name is Hector Doomhammer, I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial, leave a like to this video if you did, and I'll see you next time, goodbye.